Today, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the first meeting of the Aero Club of Washington. Looking back, Washington in 1909 was a very different city. The automobile was still a novelty, and only a handful of citizens believed that the flying machine was here to stay. On the record, the aviation skeptics built a strong case. Only months before, Oval Wright had been released from Fort Myer Hospital, suffering from severe injuries in a plane crash in 1908. His passenger, Army Lieutenant Thomas E. Selfridge, was killed in the crash, and an Army contract accepting the plane had remained unsigned. Public opinion as 1909 began was that the brothers were cranks, and their claims about powered flight only a dream. Even their achievements at Kitty Hawk on December 17, 1903, were dismissed by the general public as the hallucinations of a couple of crackpots. Supporters of the Wright brothers were frustrated at the lack of enthusiasm for the Wright's invention and worried that the machine would be exploited by foreign powers. They saw in the airplane a powerful military weapon to protect the nation, and they shared with the Wrights a vision of unlimited peacetime potential. Supporters of the Wrights in this country decided that this national indifference could only be overcome by action that would attract national attention. On January 23, 1909, in the offices of the Chief Signal Officer of the Army, General James Allen, 26 men gathered to formally establish the Aero Club of Washington. This organizing committee approved a constitution and a set of bylaws to govern the club, and then elected the first slate of officers. These included Albert F., chief research engineer for the Curtis Aeroplane Company and then the Smithsonian Institution, famed inventor Alexander Graham Bell, an early competitor of the Wright Brothers, and George O. Squire, the first Army officer to earn a Ph.D., and the man who drafted the original specifications for the Army's first airplane. In May, a meeting was held at the home of Dr. Bell where prominent Washingtonian Thomas Walsh was elected as the club's first president. In an era where public relations was an unknown phrase, the Aero Club was slow in reaching the people with the right story. Only the powerful persuasion of the Aero Club members convinced the brothers that they should join the speaking program that the Aero Club proposed, and by June, the Aero Club was prepared to host its first ever members' luncheon. This was held at the Cosmos Club on June 10, 1909, and honored Orville and Wilbur Wright as well as the Aero Club of America, which later became the National Aeronautic Association, with whom the club is still affiliated. Afterwards, the entire group walked over to the White House where President Taft awarded the Wright brothers two beautiful medals sponsored by the Aero Club of America. During the weeks following their visit to the White House, the brothers successfully tested a plane at Fort Myer, and in August, the Army leased its first airfield at College Park, Maryland. During the following two months, Wilbur taught three Army aviators to fly, Lieutenants Frank P. Lom, Frederick E. Humphrey, and B.D. Fulvois. Lieutenant Lom, an early Aero Club of Washington member, is shown here with what would eventually become the New Cavalry. The airplane. Since 1909, membership is limited by the club's bylaws to adults of good character who support the goals of the club. From the beginning, all prospective members must submit an application to join the Aero Club, which is reviewed by the membership chairman and recommended to the Aero Club board for approval. In many ways, today's Aero Club of Washington represents the same interests and occupations as it did when it was founded in 1909. From the beginning, the Aero Club membership directories have served as who's who of the Washington aviation community. The club is governed by a president and a board of governors. For 100 years, volunteer members from all segments of the Washington aviation community selflessly contribute their time and expertise to benefit the club. After a dormant period during the war years, the Aero Club developed a national reputation as one of the premier speaker forums for the aviation industry. Since the early 60s, the club has held monthly luncheons at several different hotels and clubs in downtown Washington. Notice those early prices. Under the guidance of each year's president and board of governors, the club has offered the membership a wide range of speakers representing the leadership in all facets of aviation. The club has been honored to have the FAA Administrator and the U.S. Secretary of Transportation speak every year. At one luncheon, we were able to bring together 11 past FAA Administrators. The luncheons allowed the Aero Club to perform the crucial function of providing a forum for Washington area aviation leaders to hear and consider the views and insights of aviation experts while providing an opportunity for members to meet with their peers and exchange ideas. As charged in its Articles of Incorporation, the club has honored aviators and historic flights. In 1958, the club installed a historic plaque on the East Haines Point to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the first air mail flight from that spot in 1918. The plaque remains there today. During the 1980s, the club created its Aero Club Trophy, which was first presented to Congressman Norman Mineta. The award was later renamed the Aero Club of Washington Trophy for Aviation Excellence in 1993 and was first presented to Herb Kelleher of Southwest Airlines. The Aero Club Trophy has been presented on an annual basis to some of the most distinguished individuals and groups in aviation and is displayed permanently in the National Air and Space Museum. In 1999, the trophy was presented posthumously to the club's good friend Admiral Don Engen and the trophy was then named after him.
Since 1948, the Aero Club of Washington has served as the host of the annual Wright Memorial Dinner in cooperation with the National Aeronautic Association in the presentation of the Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy. This formal event is the highlight of the year for many in the aviation industry, as up to 2,000 government and industry guests gather in December to honor that year's recipient. Along with the illustrious recipients of the NAA Trophy, the dinners have attracted many famous guests and speakers, including congressional guests, entertainers, and celebrity aviators. The Aero Club of Washington has long sponsored aviation education programs to help instill the excitement of aviation in students in the Washington area and to provide mentors and assistance to those interested in aviation careers. Through the Aero Club Foundation of Washington and our members' support, we continue to sponsor and support DC Public Schools and the National Air and Space Museum in their aviation education initiatives. The club's primary goal, unchanged to this day, was to foster and promote interest in the principles and development of aeronautics. We are indebted to our members who have supported the Aero Club for 100 years of bringing the Washington and national aviation community together to fulfill this goal. We look forward to the next 100 years.